I wanna make sure brands know they can trust us. We're not out to make brands look bad. I'm not out to shame them. I'm always hopeful in these situations. Today's video is part of our new series called Is It Cruelty Free? We're doing that here on the Logical Harmony YouTube channel. And in the intro video for it, which we'll make sure to link below, I kind of explain why we're doing this. And to summarize that, it's the cruelty-free space is super confusing for a lot of people and it can be hard to tell what's what and we just wanted to share more with you guys and connect more with you guys about what we do at Logical Harmony, especially in relation to vetting if brands are cruelty-free or not. Um, and so it's super interesting that we wanted to start the series and the timing was pretty crazy because today CoverGirl announced that they're Leaping Bunny certified through Cruelty Free International. So it kind of just seemed like the perfect timing to start that series. We've been getting so many DMs and messages and emails all day from you guys. And it just became really clear too, like aside from the fact that you guys wanted to learn a lot about it, but if a brand as massive as CoverGirl was cruelty free, that would change so much for the cruelty free community. It would do so much for animals. It would do so much to show other brands that you can be cruelty free and still be this massive company. Um, so we thought it might just be a good one to cover since we're starting at the very beginning with them and trying to get them on the cruelty free brand list of Logical Harmony. So. This is just gonna go through that whole process and share it with you guys. Um, hopefully it's helpful. It's probably gonna be, it's definitely going to be a series of videos. Um, so hopefully you guys just stick with it all and find it interesting. Uh, so what 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 is going on right now? A lot. Um, so today, CoverGirl announced that they are certified cruelty-free by Cruelty Free International, which gave them the Leaping Bunny logo. They're one of the organizations that can license it. So that happened this morning. Wait, what do you mean license it? Like Cruelty Free International has an agreement with with the, Leaping Bunny that they are allowed to certify companies cruelty free, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's my understanding. So there's two groups that can give the Leaping Bunny logo. One is Cruelty Free International. The original that runs leapingbunny.org is CCIC. It seems like in general they align, but they don't always. So right now, CoverGirl is listed on Cruelty Free International as Cruelty Free. Cruelty Free International is like exploding about it all over social. And the Leaping Bunny socials haven't said anything and it's not on leapingbunny.org. So that's the first time I'm aware of this happening, at least so with like such a huge brand. So that's a little interesting to me. Okay, so what do we know? Like, what, like, what do we know? What do, do we, we know? know if they're like, do they meet our, do they meet logical harmony standard for being cruelty free? Like, I'm not sure yet. I haven't really been able to talk to them to get like in depth answers and ask a lot of questions. I think it's promising. The fact that they would go through the Leaping Bunny process is very promising. It shows that they have a good commitment behind it internally, but we don't know yet if they meet the logical harmony standards because we haven't been able to thoroughly talk to them yet. But a lot of other influencers are saying, yeah, they're cruelty free and like celebrating it online, right? Yeah, totally. A lot are. There are also a lot that are saying we want to wait till they're on logical harmony. Um, but there are a lot of people that are promoting them as cruelty free because of this. So we, uh, we emailed the PR company and mm -hmm. where are we at with that? Um, like, uh, I know they just emailed us and we haven't read that one yet, but, yeah. but like up to that point, where are we? Up to that point where we are is that it seems like they're open to talking to us. They, it seems like, you know, they, who the PR company and cover girl. So it started by me DMing CoverGirl and they replied and they seemed really interested in talking to us. And then their outside PR team reached out and they were like, hey, we heard you want to chat. Um, so it seems like they're open to it and it seems like they're really interested. So that's also a good sign. Do we know whether these, this outside PR company is running their social or like, do we know if that DM was answered by the PR company or, or CoverGirl internal team? Like, do we know? We don't know for sure. I kind of think it was answered by internal CoverGirl because the message from outside PR said, we heard you're interested. Oh, okay. It didn't say like I was talking to you. Um, but the DM from CoverGirl asked for email addresses and said, you know, I need internal. They didn't use these exact words. I can't remember their exact words, but it was, the gist was basically like, I need to figure out who you would talk to. Got it. And then we got an email like minutes later from outside PR. So the fact that they're moving quickly is really promising. Yeah. Um, once I was able to get a hold of them, once they got that people cared, I think that made a huge difference. And then they've been really proactive in their responses. So that's exciting. 
And they've also been telling people on social who've said like, hey, I wanna see you guys on Logical Harmony that they're talking to us. So that's also a good sign. Okay. <sighs> wow. This is a lot. It's a lot, yeah. And like you mentioned, we have the other email from them that we haven't opened yet. Should we do that now? Yeah, what does it say? Well, actually, you can't you can't read it on there. They have a confidentiality thing. So yeah. do you want to just give a gist of what we said in our email? Yeah. And then... Let me find it. Yeah. Yeah, so the gist was saying, like, we're super excited to hear from them. Um, you know, we want to talk to them about their process of you know, about how they're going cruelty free and we appreciate that they're helping to uh, um, get us in touch with their team and get some answers. And then we explained what we're doing with this video series as far as like, you know, we want to do a series on large brands that are going cruelty free. So this would be great to tie into that and that we're getting tons of questions and emails from our audience. So we wanted to put out a video today um, just to kind of update people on where we are because okay. we're getting so bombarded. And so far, from from what I saw, it looked like so far they're, we're probably not going to get on the on a call with them. Yeah, so it sounds like what they want is for us to pass over any questions we have, and they have to go through the Cover Girl team. So my guess is that since they're outside PR, it's probably questions they're not sure if they can appropriately answer, okay. and so they want to talk to people within Cover Girl to make sure like what the answers could be or who we would talk to. I think it's also too just to really figure out where we're headed with this too. Yeah. So they know who to direct that to internally at CoverGirl. Right. What were you saying earlier about CoverGirl's Instagram? They had deleted a bunch of stuff? Like, cause yeah. I, I, guess my, I guess what I'm wondering is like, and I'm imagining this is probably what's on a lot of people's mind, is like, what, what would lead us to believe that they, that they are cruelty free? Yeah. Like that this is true? And like, what information do we have that would lead us to believe that maybe it could be questionable? Totally. Okay, so the things that we have to believe that they are, um, or that it's leading in that direction are, one, they did go through the process of being certified by Leaping Bunny. That's not a small task. It does require a lot from the brand's end, so the brand does have to be very committed to wanting to be known as cruelty free to really follow through on that. Um, it's not a simple process. So I think that the fact that they would do that is a big step. Um, they erased or archived all their Instagram content that existed before today. So if you go to their Instagram right now, it's literally just the announcements about them being cruelty free. Um, so that's also really interesting. It's kind of like, it gives the perception that they're like resetting the brand image, yeah. wanting to start off of, on a fresh foot. Mm -hmm. um, very, very interesting. They do have a different parent company now than they used to. So in 2005, when they first entered the market in China, they were owned by Procter & Gamble. They're now owned by Cody. And so I maybe there's potential that in that shuffle of changing parent companies, some things about their policies changed and it took them a while to address it appropriately, whether that means, you know, maybe they wanted to vet all their ingredient suppliers, maybe, you know, because they're such a huge company, I imagine getting what they would need to be Leaping Bunny approved was not an easy task and probably took a long time. So this could have been something they've been working on internally for a very long time. Um, but they are owned by a different parent company than the one that initially put them into China. So there is potential for change there. As far as, you know, where it could still be questionable, um, basically up until now, they've told people they test on animals when required by law. So their statement, what they're saying right now is very much heavily relying on like, our, we don't test and our suppliers don't test. But to my knowledge, I've never had a statement from them personally that says their suppliers test on animals or that they test on animals. It's always been, you know, our products are tested on animals when required by law. Um, Which is a loophole a lot of brands have used in the past to say that they're cruelty free, right? Yeah, a lot of brands have used that currently. A lot of brands have in the past. So typically it means that they're selling in markets or they're making products that would be required to be tested on animals by law. So people automatically assume that means China and that's not necessarily the case. Um, there are laws in the EU, there are laws in the US, there are laws in countries all over that would require animal testing based on what the company was using as far as like new ingredients or formulations, things like that. So it's not like a black and white, do you sell in China? If they don't, it means they're not testing as required by law. A company could sell 
somewhere where animal testing is technically banned like the EU and still test as required by law, even if they don't sell in China. That is where I feel like there could still be some potential is trying to get them to speak to that. Um, also the fact that, you know, if they did pull out of China, which it sounds like they have, they're saying that they're not sold in China anymore. It sounds like it was done very quietly and that's just a little, that's a little strange because usually when major changes happen that have such a huge financial impact on the business, it's talked about. You can find press releases. Um, so and, and yeah. so they did sell in China at one point in time. Yes. Yeah. There in 2005, Procter and Gamble, who owned them at the time, issued a bunch of press releases about them going about how like they are now in China. They're now available. They're in stores in China. So they definitely did sell in China at one time. I've spent like over an hour today trying to find any press release about them leaving China or anything and I wasn't able to do that. So I'm kind of wondering if that's part of their whole marketing thing right now is like, like you and I were talking about this earlier and I was saying it's a lot better to say we don't test on animals than to say we don't test on animals anymore. Like mm -hmm. the message sounds a lot more like easy to handle when it's worded that way and like they're both true. So like, I don't know, maybe that's what's going on. Yeah, it could be too, like I like said. Maybe that's why they're being quiet about leaving China is because it, if you don't know that they were in China yeah. in the first place, then to say they left China would be to tell you that they were. That they were, yeah. Yeah, and it could also be too, since they were owned by Procter & Gamble and now they're owned by Cody, Maybe it happened during that switch. I don't know what the turnover was like at CoverGirl with the switch. Sometimes when a brand gets a new parent company, nothing really changes. The staff is still there. Other times the staff has a complete turnover and everyone except the former CEO is gone. Um, so I'm not sure, maybe it happened during that time and because of all the shuffle, it just got lost in that. Um, but it's interesting because if they really haven't been selling in China and have been cruelty free, it just seems like they would have talked about it sooner. But like I mentioned before, maybe they didn't know, you know, maybe they didn't properly vet their suppliers and they were taking time to do that. Like there's so many things where it's like, it really, it could go either way at this point is kind of how I feel. I feel like there is promise that they're cruelty free. Um, and I'm always hopeful and I'm always wanting the best out of these situations. And I feel like the fact that they have been proactive about things, they've been reactive, they're responding now, they seem genuinely interested and engaged. And that is very promising because a lot of the brands that will say we're cruelty free and then they aren't actually cruelty free, you don't get that same interaction from them. They're not as excited about it. They tend to be more closed off, more reserved, less open to conversations and discussions. Um, so I feel like they're doing a lot of things right and so there, I feel like it's definitely promising. I just feel like I can't say for sure because we haven't been able to like talk to them really in depth and get down into like the nitty gritty of right. it, which is what I really want to do next. Totally. Okay. So, so moving on to what you want to do next, yeah. um, it sounds like probably a phone call isn't going to happen today. Yeah. Uh, we're obviously going to keep pushing for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but they want they want our questions. So what do you think we should do? Like for like, should we send them over the questions that we would ask cover girl and see if they forward them to cover girl? Yeah, I but, think, because, oh, sorry. Well, I just want to say like one other thing that I think maybe people don't realize is a lot of times PR companies try to answer our questions, but we don't accept third party answers. Like we yeah. only accept parties or we only accept answers from the brand in question. So like, should we see if they pass on the questions and like see where it goes from there? I think what we should do is not necessarily send over all the questions that we have, but send over ones that give them a gist of what we want to talk about sure. and kind of explain that and be like, a lot of what we want to ask is very specific. It's very much about the business and kind of some of their practices. Um, just kind of like put them at ease and give them an idea of what we're going at them with and just kind of explain like those are things they probably can't answer like they might be able to get someone to answer it but it's going to be much more productive if we're able to get someone at cover girl itself on the phone and have a ch you know have a chat and then get stuff in writing yeah i guess the reason i'm wondering if we should send over the questions is because i'm wondering if we'll get answers sooner we might 
We might. And so I kind of feel like that's like the positive side of that. Like obviously we would prefer to have a phone call with the brand, but like. Yeah, we might get a bigger response faster. Yeah, I want to make sure we can hear from them quicker and it'll give us, it'll kind of give us the answer to like, is this, is the PR company going to try to answer the questions and not let us talk to CoverGirl or are they really going to share that information with CoverGirl and could this lead to us actually getting to the bottom of things yeah. faster? So a lot of people are asking us. So many people, yeah. So let's, um, do you want to post that story on Instagram? Yeah. Uh, telling people that we're, that we're working on it. Hey everyone, so I've received so many DMs and notifications and emails and tweets today about what's going on with CoverGirl. So I wanted to come on here and just give you guys a quick update We're digging into it really deep. Um, I've been up since 3.30. What does you being up since 3.30 have to do with it? Is that when you realized this was happening? Yeah, that's when I realized this was happening. I checked my phone at like 3.30 in the morning and saw stuff and I was like, oh man, like I need to know. Like this is potentially massive and huge for the cruelty-free community. So, I mean, aside from the time I took to take a shower, this is all I've been doing today is like trying to dig into it, trying to get back to people. Cool. So okay. we'll put that out and then let's email them back. Yeah. Um, and let's just try and get this pushed through as quickly as hopefully we can. We yeah. it's only we can only do so much. That's the thing too. It's also a lot of it is in the brain's hands. Okay, so we just sent that email over to the CoverGirls outside PR team with like our initial questions. Hopefully that means that we can talk to someone at CoverGirl um, and get more answers. So I'm going to DM CoverGirl on Instagram now and let them know that sent over. Hopefully that prompts them along. Um, It's kind of just a wait and see game at this point now. Are we going? Yeah. So we just got an email back from the outside PR team. That was super quick. Um, We're not gonna be able to get on a phone call with them today, but they are gonna pass our questions over and it sounds like they're very interested in talking to us more. So that's promising. Um, I wish we were able to get answers today, but I also don't know what time zone they're in. So it's possible it's just too late in the day um, to have a phone call. Hopefully we can tomorrow. It'd be really, really great to talk to them more. So we're about to have our call with Jay Kissa. She's another cruelty-free content creator. Um, I'm really curious to get her take on what's going on with CoverGirl, her interpretation of their statements, just how she feels about it. Um, It's very different, you know, when it's you and you're in your bubble and you interpret things differently, but I like to hear what, how other people take things and like how it comes off to them um, and what their perception is. And she's super supportive of Logical Harmony. We're friends and she today has been really encouraging CoverGirl to talk to us. And I think that has been really helpful. Um, sorry, I'm really tired. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have that talk and I think it'll be cool to share that with you guys. And like I said, I'm interested to hear her perspective on all of this and how she's feeling about it too. Like as a cruelty free content creator. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so you're on speaker and we are recording. (laughs) Um, just wanted to let you know that right away. You know, for a long time, we've been wanting to do kind of like a behind the scenes series on like what we actually do. And we haven't really been able to wrap our heads around like how to do that and how to make it interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As silly as this sounds, I think Shane Dawson has had a pretty big impact on like Tashina and like realizing like what her role can be in these type of videos. Obviously we loved your Lime Crime video. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, totally. Uh, that was just like amazing. Tashina and I, we get so caught up in our own bubble and we wanted to get your opinion on like what's going on right now. You know, is it a PR stunt? Are they cruelty free? Like, what's your take on all of this? It's hard because part of me wants to be hopeful that this is actually real. Mm-hmm. And then part of me is like, it's too good to be true. Like I just get that gut feeling that it's too good to be true they've been posting in newspapers everywhere that they're cruelty free and Mm. it's just been like a lot of media hype around it and i feel like 
if a brand wasn't truly cruelty free, I would hope that they wouldn't do that. I feel that with the re, because they rebranded recently, right? I'm pretty sure. I feel like they did too. And like their Instagram, if you look, they've like archived all the posts that existed before basically today. Yeah, which is very interesting because why would they do that? Yeah. Unless they are trying to turn over a new leaf, which I pray they are. Do you think part of your, I, I guess, hesitancy is the word I would use is because it's such a big brand? Yeah, I mean, they could have been working behind the scenes for months and not really said anything. Yeah. But a lot of the times you know, and I know, that it's often too good to be true. Like, brands can say what they want. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I I'm, don't want to leap before I have the facts. I think, too, since, like, there's no legal definition of cruelty-free, it can be really hard because there are so many major brands that will say we're cruelty-free over and over, but then they still, like, hire someone else to test on animals for them. Um, yeah. And so I think it's tough to know like what's real. So they used to be owned by Procter & Gamble and now they're owned by Cody. Maybe part of this ties into like when they did that shuffling, maybe then it opened the doors for new conversations internally and changes internally. Um, oh yeah, that could be. If that is what made this change happen, not only is that going to be just like amazing news for CoverGirl, but it's also, I think, amazing for brands with parent companies in general, because so often we see brands go the opposite direction, where they were cruelty free and then they're owned by a parent company that forces them into like, you know, selling into China. And like, I feel like so many people have hesitations from brands that are owned by parent companies just for that reason alone. So this yeah. could be like a huge turning point, not just for these two brands, but like, for the general kind of like feeling toward companies that get acquired by other parent companies in general. Yeah, totally. A hundred percent. And it could, I mean, I don't know who else Cody owns, but it could be something that maybe other brands will go cruelty free because of CoverGirl if they are cruelty free. Normally when a brand is trying to hide something, we get that vibe. And personally, I don't get a vibe that they're trying to hide anything. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Like I, and again, this is just my personal opinion, but I really am getting more of the vibe, like what Tashina was saying, that like they're kind of just trying to figure out how to handle it. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't get the vibe like they're being shady. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe this is me trying to see the best in everyone, but I feel that I've seen such a huge push in media outlets surrounding this that maybe they're just overwhelmed. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But yeah. That's me. That could be me trying to see the best in literally everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am right there with you because I always try and be like optimistic about brands because I do think they can change and there is potential for major change in the cruelty free space. Yeah, and I also feel that if indeed CoverGirl is cruelty free, we should, I mean, I'm going to support them mm -hmm. for changing. I can't judge them on their past actions if they're willing to change it totally. yeah yeah completely i, I feel would rather way. celebrate the change versus condemning them for their past i feel like we've kept you on the phone for a really long time um yeah thanks for taking the Don't time worry. to talk with us and yeah. give us your vibe on everything of course thank you for letting me i appreciate it totally yeah, totally so we just got off the call with Jay Kissa um, and decided to take a break. And then Justin saw that CoverGirl's external PR team had emailed us back. So we wanted to hop on, see what it says. So this is actually exciting and promising. They're working on getting us, you know, answers and they're hoping that they can get them to us tonight. That's rad. That would be amazing. Um, we didn't send them all our questions though, right? No, so. just the initial okay. questions. Okay, cool. But that's still like a huge step. And yeah. to me, the fact that they would take the time to do that today is amazing. Oh, totally. Um, so I'm hoping that we could still, you know, send them more questions, have a call with them. I'm hoping we could wrap everything up, but that's super amazing. It would be amazing to get them tonight. Yeah. Um, they're also offering to ship products overnight. Um, so we can get a sense of their latest and greatest. Um, I, so that's a separate conversation. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we should take 
take products from them yet. No, I think I want to wait until I know if they're cruelty free or not. I don't want there to be any sort of expectations. I feel like it's a little early. I get that they're eager and they're excited and they're like, yeah, let's do this. So I feel like it's part of that, which is amazing. Um, but I feel like it's too early. I wouldn't feel comfortable with it. I don't want brands to feel like that is part of being on the Logical Harmony cruelty free list, like that they have to send product or that there's somehow like some sort of give and take there. Like it, it kind of feels weird to me. Like brands don't pay to be on the Logical Harmony list. They don't have to send product obviously. Um, but it just, it feels kind of weird to have them so connected sometimes. Like I really like them to be separate. I, I have a fuzz on my face. I like them to be separate because then it makes it really clear to the brand like, hey, product's cool, but right now we're just really concerned in finding out if you're cruelty free or not. Um, I don't wanna blur those lines. Yeah, totally. So let's just wait and see what happens and see where it goes. Appreciate the offer, it's nice of them. Yeah. Um, I think if anything, this email shows that they're definitely interested and they're putting work into it, which is really rad. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, what? Can I, will you grab me? Oh, I, I have my drink. I'm so really tired. Can... I thought I didn't have it. Um, okay, so while you were making salad for us, mm -hmm. uh, we did get an email back. Oh, we did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you read it already or no? Um, I skimmed it, okay. but I wanted you to read it, um, obviously. <laughs> mm, here it is. Okay. Yeah. It looks like they answered our initial questions. I'm gonna go through, cause I just wanna make sure the answers are all like yeah. up to par. Go for so it. give me a minute. Sure, we'll wait. Hmm, okay. They didn't answer like one of the most major ones. Okay. So we do need an answer to that specific one just to move past the initial questions. Might've just been an oversight on their part to not answer that question but we definitely need an answer to that one before we can move forward at all. Okay, so I'll email them back. Yeah. And bring that up. Yeah. Uh, and let them know that this is a good start. Yeah, it's a super good start. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so as I'm looking uh, through this email that they sent us, I have some pretty big concerns. Okay. Um, so okay. I, I was going to write back to it um, as we just discussed. Uh, and before I wrote back to it, I'm like going through and just kind of like taking a closer look because I know that sometimes when we get an email like this, it takes a few minutes to like really kind of go over it over and over again and like really get a feel for the language that's being used. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that CoverGirl is doing this, but we both know that one thing that brands will do and have done multiple times to us in the past is that they will use language that sounds like they're saying one thing when they're saying something else. Um, so the concerns that I have, first of all, is that, so we asked, we asked a, a handful of questions about um, just their products, like their finished products being tested and yeah. all these things. And instead of saying, no, they're not tested, what they said was Leaping mm -hmm. Bunny certifies that they're not tested. So that in and of itself, I don't think is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have another series of questions here. Maybe it was just an oversight on their part and it's not that big a deal, but mm -hmm. I feel like to put our minds at ease and to be able to like, you know, stand behind saying yes or no to them being cruelty free, I feel like we have to bring up these concerns. I'll email them back and we can address those things and then we'll see where we go from there. So I don't know about you, but I've been pretty blown away by the support of people online. Yeah, I definitely have. It's been crazy how many people have been, um, you know, like you said, supporting us. They've been tweeting about it and they've like commenting on Instagram, just encouraging CoverGirl to get on our list and encouraging them to talk to us. So many people are posting it in their stories. It's been truly amazing to see. So like, thank you so much to everyone who's done that. I think it's had a huge impact on everything we've been doing with CoverGirl. Yeah, I definitely, like, it's obvious that they're taking us more seriously because so many people are speaking out. Yeah. And saying that they want us on there. And like, I know you've been trying to go through and like, 
people's comments, mm -hmm. and there's so many that Instagram is like not, you know, not letting you like that many comments in a row, which is like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely missing a lot of it. So I just thank you. Um, everyone who has said something supportive, whether it's on our posts, on something by CoverGirl, on Twitter, anywhere, just thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it so much. It's been amazing to see how many of you want this transparency from brands and value what we're doing. And that's just been, it's been amazing. Like, thank you so much. Yeah. So you guys saw we had followed up with them again and we haven't heard back. I believe they're on East Coast time, so I'm sure that's part of it. So I imagine we'll hear from them in the morning and then we'll kind of pick back up. Like I'm really hoping we can do this swiftly and quickly and effectively. Um, it would be amazing. That would be ideal. So keep like letting them know that you want CoverGirl to be on Logical Harmony, that you want them to talk to us. It's helping so much. And hopefully we have more updates really, really soon. So make sure, you know, if you guys like this video, comment, let us know if you wanna see more of these, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. 